Righty, eh? G'day guys, Quacker Man here, thanks for tuning in. Just spent the night down at Rapid Bay actually, and uh, geez, it was bloody windy, I'll tell you what. It was the uh, October long weekend, and uh, the missus had gone down in the van, so I thought I'd uh, take the bike and go and join her, and put all my camping gear on there, and uh, yeah, so I slept in the tent, and uh, mate, tell you what man, they don't call it Rapid Bay for nothing man, the winds are rapido, very rapid. But anyway, didn't have too bad of a sleep at uh, the end of the day. Um, woke up feeling reasonably refreshed, so uh, went down to Delamere, uh, got a Red Bull, filled up the tank with some of their, what do they call it, premium uh, Max or something, I don't know, it's a, it's a 98 anyway, I did ask the woman behind the counter and uh, so that's good, I like to run 98. Keep the quacker lean. But uh, yeah, just uh, going down a, a road which I've never been down before, so uh, it's always good to discover a new road. It's a little shortcut between sort of um, Main South Road and uh, that Victor Harbour Delamere Road. So you're sort of cutting behind Delamere, basically. I guess I'm riding through Delamere. But um, yeah, I thought I'd go down and have a bit of a suss. Um, try and sort of uh, go to a couple of places I hadn't been before. So. Um, I was coming down along here and uh, I ended up looking down uh, one of these little side roads and I seen some headlights and I thought, oh, adventure riders. So I popped a Yui and went back and uh, they were a young couple out of Middleton actually, dude on a KLR and uh, hey, she was on a Tenero. How's it going? Does that road go anywhere particular? Does it join up with Tappanapa Road? Yeah, it goes through the... It does, does it? Headquarters is pretty good. If you don't mind getting muddy. Oh, it's a bit muddy, is it? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah okay. How deep is the mud? It's not too bad. There's like... I'm going to need a couple of Oh, I'll have a look. What year is your KLR? Uh, 2017. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, this is a no weight. Hey. Hi, buddy. Hey, whereabouts do you guys live? Uh, oh, okay, yep. Yeah. Ah, cool. Yeah. What are you riding a Tenere? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Is that the 660? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, mate of mine's got one of them, actually. He's got the dual pipes on it, though. Did you change that? Yeah, no, no. I bought it like this, but I've seen they, like, you yeah, usually come with the dual pipe, hey? Yeah, cool. Ah, oh, well, enjoy. Yeah, it's a good day for it. It's bloody warm. Yeah, it's a bit warm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's spring for you. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, enjoy your day, guys. I'll walk out and have a bit of a squiz. Hey. Yeah, so I thought I'd go and have a bit of a squiz, check out this mud. I thought to myself, I've got to face my enemies head on, you know. After that little scrap I had with the mud down in uh, Sunnydale Road there at uh, Strath, where the old uh, chocolate mousse got the better of me. Um, this time I'm loaded up too, so I've got the bloody uh, sleeping gear and panniers and everything's full up. Uh, probably not as qu not quite as much weight as I had on uh, last weekend going out of Pillar Springs, but um, yeah. I just thought I'd uh, take it easy through here and uh, just assess the situation and see how squishy it is. But that uh, was all good. It's a nice little track through here, in fact. Obviously, oh, the, here. obviously the four wheel drives of made a bit of a mess of it but it makes it all that little bit more challenging I guess for people like myself yeah so I'm not a huge fan of mud as you can tell but um it's good to uh, to try and experience it here and there because you know you're going to come across it, mate. You know it's one of those things you just you just can't always avoid it. So uh, and when you do things on your own like this and you get through without a, without uh, any issues, um, it just gives you a little bit more confidence, you know. So I'll uh, oh, check out these channels, mate. Jesus. You'd be scraping bloody guards to go down the side of that one, wouldn't you, if you're in a full drive? So 
So I reckon uh, maybe during the summer this, this this track here might get a bit sandy. I'd say. We'll have to take some channels here. I wonder if they ever come through and actually grade this shit. Up here. But, you know, you've got to have some fun. You've got to have somewhere to play. I mean, full drivers have got to have somewhere to play and, you know, so do we. So, uh, you know, as long as I don't go close and shit off like this all the time. Yeah, so the no through road. I don't know why they put no through road on there. I mean, it's... Clearly not a no three road. It's just a bit, a bit silly. You got four wheel drives only. That's fair enough. Yeah, no worries. But it's not. What a no three road. Oh yeah, she was getting a bit warm through there. Obviously going a bit slow. So uh, the old temperature gauge was creeping up over half. So anyway, I went for a bit of a cruise down here into the conservation park, and uh, first time ever, um, came across some rangers. I've been through here a couple of times now. Never seen a ranger. Never paid. I didn't think you had to pay. Just to actually ride around. Hang on, mate. Hey, good Hang on, let me just uh, turn my music off. You're camping? I've been camping at Rapid Bay, okay. and I just come down here for a drive. I don't have to pay just to drive, do I? No, no. Uh, in the park, you have to pay entry fee. If I'm sleeping? No, no. Even entry fee. I have to pay to get in here. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that's right. Ah. Oh well. What do you, where do you do online? How much is it? Is $10. Motorbike, I have to check with the um, website. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll just turn around and go out. Okay. Can I go to Blowhole Beach, though? Blowhole Beach is the same. There's an old conservation park. You have to pay $10. Oh, as well? Yeah. Oh, just to go, just for driving? Yes, that's right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so we have to make it bigger, you know, like old roads, and we have to do more grading. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, I wasn't sure, because I've seen the campsite. It says $10, yeah. but I wasn't sure about the driving, so... No, Right. Oh, right, okay. All right, well, I'll just, yeah, I'll go out. Okay. Yeah, no worries, mate. Cheers. Oh, there you go. So, if you want to just drive in here, it actually costs you money. Yeah, so anyway, I thought to myself, well, you know what, I might as well pay the fee, and then I can go down in here, and I can go down to Blowhole Beach and do whatever, um, because obviously they can fine you, um, you know, on the spot fine, I suppose they send you something in the mail, who knows, but uh, I don't know if those dudes actually can fine you, but uh, it was only 11 bucks, mate, so it's not the end of the world. Easy enough to do, you've just got to do it up here where you've got reception. Once you get past here, there's really not much phone reception, so... So there you go. Ten bucks, uh, 11 bucks to get in, so that's not too bad. Yeah, so once you pay that fee, I mean, it basically goes from, I think, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. at night. Uh, you can go anywhere within the Deep Creek Conservation Park. Uh, you've obviously got to book and um, pay for a camping site online as well, so that's an extra fee on top of that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, they've got to grade the roads and, you know, sort of look after the... Uh, uh, yeah, well, look after the roads, I guess. I mean, some of them are still pretty rutty. Um, I don't know how often they do the grading, but, uh, you know, they've obviously got to paint their signs and keep them all new and, uh, you know, make sure the campgrounds are clean and whatnot because, you know, some people are like with bloody campgrounds and just leave all their crap everywhere. But, yeah, she's a really warm day, mate, even down here in Deep Creek. Um, it felt like it was, you know, around about 30 degrees or so. I mean, you know, high 20s at least. Not much to see here at the end of the day. I mean, you can see Kangaroo Island over there on the right on the horizon. Um, so I'll just stop here and, you know, take a bit of a photo of the bike. Now, 
Anyway, um, I thought what I'd do is actually go and have a look at the campgrounds. I've never oh, checked them you. out. What have we got here? Gas fires only. Okay. So I'm not sure what the fee is. You've got to go online and book the oh, site. Yeah. Get out of here. Big fire pits. Well, you can't have a fire at the moment. Okay. Toilet facilities and water. There's a fair few sites here, though. I mean, there ain't much of a view, though. You've got to sort of get out and explore, really. It's a bit of a, uh, you know, tree-bound area. Still, it'll be alright to come down here during winter, I reckon, where you can, when you can light a fire. That'll be good. Now, you can't bring any pets, though. Let's go and have a look there. I want to go and see what this water's like, if it's drinkable or not. A little bit of info there, I think, about some trails and whatnot. Clean toilets. Yeah, so uh, basically just said don't drink the water without treating it. So, you know, without boiling it, basically. Not sure if it's uh, boil water or if it's rain water. Doesn't seem to be much of a catchment there for, for rain. Maybe they come and top it up don't manually. Don't drink the water unless you boil it. Fair enough. I reckon they probably come around with trucks and top it up. Who knows? This will be $11 goes towards, mate. Oh, look out, look out, cut the corner. I'll be right, mate, don't worry about me. Yeah, so, um, continuing on a bit further to a, a nice grassy knoll where there's some awesome lookouts on the south coast. Stop again for a uh, another photo snap opportunity. How's the views, man? You can't beat them, eh? So now, um, where are we off to now? Let's go down the end and have a quick squiz. Not much going on down here except a little bit of a picnic and there's a hiking trail. So at this point here I'm thinking to myself, oh let's go down to Blowhole Beach. But um, before I get to Blowhole Beach, there's that uh, turn off to go down to, I think it's called Boat Harbour Track. Kraken views. I should call this place for Kraken. So four-wheel drive only, they reckon, and um, I reckon last time I did see a sign on there saying no motorcycles. Uh, but I'm glad that they've removed that because, I mean, Jesus, man, you need somewhere to bloody play. Crying out loud. But, yeah, this track here is quite good, actually, um, Boat Harbour track. Um, it's got some very steep sections towards the end, uh, quite rutted as well. Obviously, they don't come down and grade this thing too bloody regularly. But, you know, I guess they can get away with saying full drive only, and that means they don't have to do that as often, I guess. So <laughs> it might be a bit too steep for the graders. Who knows? I mean, they're bloody big pieces of machinery. I don't know how they would go on uh, tight little uh, tracks like this. But, um, yeah, quite nice. I'm not 
You can see some of these ruts starting to creep in. Obviously, we've had a bit of rain over the winter, so uh, yeah, the tracks have uh, rutted out slightly. But nothing too crazy. Um, we haven't hit the steepest parts yet. Oh, you gotta love the Mark and Kane, don't you? Classic Aussie band, Adelaide band, in fact. Awesome views. All right, there's a sign there on the right that's just saying uh, caution, very steep descent. So now we're hitting the real steep stuff. The, the key is to just keep the pace a bit slower, um, keep it in first gear and just sort of, yeah, try not to uh, gain too much momentum because um, the old pick, mate, she weighs quite a bit, especially with all the camping gear and stuff on there, man. So, uh, yeah, there's a bit of momentum that, a uh, bit of inertia. Anyway, it's just another one of these little lookouts. So uh, once again, mate, we'll stop for the uh, obligatory photo photo shot. Quite a good place to park as well. <laughs> All right, let's try not to burn the clutch out, eh? Uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought actually going up. Uh, it was probably actually easier going up than it was going down. Um, mind you, you know, some of the some of the ruts and uh, tight turns there, is, it was a little bit uh, slow in the manoeuvring, but um, yeah, you just power on, get a bit of a bit of a wheel spin as you go around some of these, because it's uh, a bit loose and obviously, you, you know, <laughs> you're going up a bloody steep gradient. So um, yeah, but it was good fun. Um, you know, hit second gear every now and again, but uh, yeah, uh, it was all good. I just love that view there, I reckon that looks awesome. It's like you're in Africa or something. Not that I've ever been to Africa. Don't know if I'd want to actually, but uh, people rave about it, man, especially on uh, Adventure Rider Radio. If you guys ever want to hear a really good podcast, search for Adventure Rider Radio. It's uh, run by a guy called Jim Martin, he's a Canadian dude. And they talk about all sorts of stuff overland. So overlanding is the term they use for people that, you know, adventure bike riders that go across continents and around the world and all that sort of stuff. And you can learn and, uh, you know, learn lots about it, border crossings, what to do, what not to do, tips, you know, riding tips, experiences, people's stories of their travels. It's really, really good. So do yourself a favour. As a great man once said, I mean, what else are you going to listen to? Just bloody radio, commercial radio, talkback radio? Nah. If you want to listen to Talkback Radio, listen to them talk about motorcycle riding and adventure bike riding. That's, uh, that's what you want. Oh, well, there's the exit to uh, Boat Harbour Track, so uh, do yourself a favour and check it out. It's pretty good. Well, I'm just making my way over now to Second Valley uh, as I head back home going to be hitting up a section of road that uh, I haven't actually done yet. Uh, I've seen it and thought to myself, nah, she looks too gnarly, not going to do it, but I'm going to give it a crack today. Uh, last time I looked at it, I was actually looking up the track, not down the track, and it was very sandy. Um, but before we get there, um, I noticed there was some gates open here on a bloody forest. Now, this is a long weekend. Um, so yeah, I don't know what's going on here, mate. There's nobody actually doing any logging. Excuse me, but why aren't motorcycles allowed in here? Unbelievable. Look at all this. Christine for riding around. On a Saturday? Do you reckon they're felling trees on a Saturday? Righto guys, so I know I'm breaking the law here and if you want to bloody blast me in the comments, go right ahead and if the authorities want to find me or bloody seize my motorcycle, well, they're quite welcome to come and confront me and talk to me about this and I'd love to talk to them about this as well because this is the kind of thing 
that I'm going for here as far as trying to get public access for trail bike riding. Now, I'm not talking about 24-7, open access, all areas every day of the bloody year, but, you know, in certain conditions, in certain seasons, you know, we should be allowed to have access. I mean, you can ride a mountain bike down here and they can ride in areas and carry diseases and weeds. And, I mean, look at the sides of the roads here. There's weeds and stuff. These aren't all pine trees growing here. So, you know, um, we're not going to be causing that much more of a drama. Um, if you can let horses in here, mountain bike riders and, and walkers, I can't see why you can't let uh, motorcycle riders, just like they do in the eastern states and, and overseas. Uh, you just you abide by the rules and you power off your engine when you're going past horses not to spook them and you keep well away from uh, from pedestrians and you slow right down and you can put a 40k speed limit on it. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, all we want to do is stick to the trails, go and explore and have a little bit of fun. So, um, you know, if the fun police want to shut me down on that, well, you know, they're quite entitled to, but this is the kind of nanny state environment that really gets to me and, you know, it, we really need to revise this uh, scenario so that we can just have a little bit of fun for ourselves. You know, we could easily pay for a permit to ride in here. Keep it all above board, on the books, no problems. So this is what I'm talking about. It's, it's very sad indeed that these tracks are open for cyclists, even people with dogs, walkers, permit required for horse riders. No camping, no motorcycles, no cars, no shooting, no wood chopping. I mean, you've got to let us in and play around in these kind of areas. It's just, they do this kind of thing in Canada and even in Victoria, New South Wales, and probably even in Queensland. I think we're the only state that's not allowing motorcycle riders within a forest reserve. Very sad state of affairs. Let's hope we can get some traction on this and on days like this, when the gates are open and it doesn't seem to be anyone working, I can see some uh, log felling equipment over there, but there's nobody, there's no trucks, so yeah, very sad state of affairs at the moment. Yeah, but even if there was logging going on, we're not going to go and ride our bikes around them and park next to them and stuff like that. You're just going to keep well away. It's not rocket science. I mean, riding around on bloody in the, on the road uh, in amongst traffic is probably more dangerous than riding around in a bloody forest area. Uh, you know, you, yes, there is the fact that you've got loose terrain and you've got to ride to the conditions and your skill level and you've got to have an appropriate motorcycle and that sort of stuff, but that's just, you know, you're stupid if you're going to go down there on a road bike and kill yourself. I mean, you know, people ride bloody without a helmet on the road and, you know, or without a seatbelt. I mean, you know, there's idiots everywhere. You can't stop all idiots. But what you've got to do is not let the minority rule the majority. So all they've got to do is pull their fingers out. Anyway, off of that subject, uh, let's talk about this road. So, um, yeah, this is um, that road that I was talking about earlier where I didn't want to come up it because it was very rocky and gnarly and very sandy. Oh, there goes some roos. Well, I thought I'd have a crack going down it. Um, since I've been doing some, you know, steeper sections today, I sort of gathered a little bit more confidence to do this. So I thought I'd give it a crack. Uh, and the trick is just slow and steady wins the race, you know. Um, it's quite steep and a little bit loose in areas. Other areas it's quite compact and rocky, like hard bedrock sort of, you know, underneath. But then you've got your bigger rocks as well. So, uh, yeah, you just got to make sure you've got your front wheel in the right place. And don't come unstuck at the end of the day. Some deep ruts here. You know, as I said, the four-wheel drives come through here too, mate. I mean, they would make more mess of it than bloody uh, than motorcycle riders. You know, so getting back to the forest thing, you know, I mean, um, you know, even with bloody mountain bike riders, they go in Kaipo and create bloody tracks. They dig in berms and they bring in pallets of wood and bloody, you know, make jumps. And I mean, they're, they're probably doing just as much damage as we are here, you know what I mean? So, you know, these kind of arguments, I think they're all just null and void. They're all just excuses. Um, I think it's just something to do with the greenies, you know, they, they, they think that we're going to tear up all the bloody roads and stuff. I mean, yeah, it's, um, this is not, you know, if you look at this here, I mean, this, this road doesn't need to be pristine. This road can be left like this for people like ourselves to come and have some fun, four wheel drives included, you know? Um, not every road has to be, you know, pristine and, and, and uh, if it has a sign on that says four wheel drive only, four wheel drives only. 
and you know obviously a motorcycle is is capable of doing the same kind of thing but uh, you wouldn't want to come up here in your little Holden Barina uh, you're liable to bottom out get stuck um, roll it over who knows but uh, yeah it's just using a bit of bloody common sense at the end of the day anyway thanks for sticking around if you've made it this far in the video just want to thank you guys and uh, if you've got any comments to make be they positive or negative uh, I'm happy to reply uh, I don't want to get into any arguments and stuff like that you know it's not what I'm about all I want to do is basically uh, try and um, tr try and raise the issue that you know uh, us adventure bike riders are looking for somewhere you know a little bit different to ride and, and somewhere nice and new and um, you know what I was saying we'd be happy to pay fees and, and, and have it as a um, you know a few times a year uh, allowed access to go into places like that um, you know it's, it's not going to uh, it's not going to cause major damage to the environment we're not talking about 365 seven days a week you know um, basically just have a bit of safe clean fun abide by the rules and um, yeah you know get out and explore uh, there's only so many dirt roads South Australia has to offer and uh, if you want to keep it close to Adelaide as well for that tourism factor where we can promote adventure bike riding I just think Second Valley and, and places like that uh, would be ideal. So uh, anyway, till next time, keep on quacking, guys.